Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation with complex numbers. We have 1 plus square root of 3i to the power z, as you can see in red, equals 1 minus the square root of 3i. So I guess we can call this exponent an exponent that negates? No, an exponent that conjugates. I hope I haven't made this problem because it somewhat looks familiar. Anyways, I hope it's not a repeat. So we have this equation and how can we solve for z? Now, some of you may be new to complex numbers. Go ahead and check my lecture videos. If you're new to complex numbers, uh, I made nine basic videos. So some of you might be thinking, why don't we just ln both sides? We're going to get ln this equals ln this. And then we can go ahead and bring the z to the front and then divide both sides by ln 1 plus root 3i, which should give us the answer, right? That will be the cheap, quick solution. But what is the ln of this number? What is the ln of that number? Another thing you also need to consider is the fact that these are uh, multi-valued functions. So they have multiple values, depending on which branch you choose, uh, whether it's st stated or not, maybe you're gonna go with the principal value, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of uh, issues here. Make sense? Okay. That's why we're not just gonna go like this. Instead, we're gonna write it, and I mean, we're gonna arrive at something similar, but we'll be using different forms. So, how do you find the log of a complex number? Let's talk about that first. How do you ln something a plus bi? By the way, I'm talking about the general log, complex logarithm. If you wanted to specify the principal value or principal logarithm, then you can write it with a capital L. That's, I believe, uh, pretty standard. Anyway, so to find it, you basically first find the absolute value ln of the absolute value and then multiply by the argument of this number, whatever the argument is. An argument is usually given by our tangent. If a and b are positive or under certain conditions, this will turn into arc tangent b over a. Of course, if it's not the case, then you kind of have to adjust for the quadrant, okay? So, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem using complex exponentiation. So if you have a complex number like w to the power z, it can be written as e to the power z ln w. And as I said earlier, the natural log of a complex number is multi-valued, so we're going to have infinitely many values. But in this case, we have 1 plus root 3i to the power z. So w is replaced by the base. That gives us e to the power z times ln 1 plus root 3i. Uh oh the ln came up again, but in a more um, technical or rigorous way, maybe. And then, of course, right-hand side is going to be 1 minus root 3i, but guess what? We can also write that in polar form, so we can work with polar forms, because polar forms um, will make this easier. I don't know if you can find a, what's it called, a standard form solution from here directly without using this. I doubt it, but anyways. So now we have this equation and uh, we're going to go ahead and also turn the right hand side uh, to polar form. To do that, think about 1 minus root 3i. It's going to look like this. Root 3 absolute value is definitely uh, greater than 1. So it's going to look like this. And our number is going to be located here. The critical part is finding the angle. And this seems to be like a 30 degree angle. And this seems to be like a 60 degree angle. But if you measure it in the negative direction, because that's the negative direction, clockwise, that will be negative pi over 3. So that would be my argument. And of course, uh, the modulus would be for w, because we call that number w, right? No, actually, not, no, not, that's not w. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it's not w. But uh, you get the idea. The absolute value is going to be 2 from Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So we can write uh, 1 minus root 3i as 2 times e to the power. Notice that it's negative pi over 2, so I'm going to write it as negative i times pi over 3. If you want, you can add 2 pi to this and to make it positive, but that's no big deal because we're going to consider uh, all the um, possible cases. In other words, 
we should write this as 2 times e to the power i times negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Make sense? That's going to give us all the solutions. And now we can go ahead and set these equal to each other. e to the power z times ln 1 plus root 3i equals 2 times e to the power i times negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. But wait a minute. We haven't done the natural log here. So let's do that next. How do you find ln of this number? ln 1 plus root 3i is just going to be ln 2 because that's the absolute value plus i times. If you think about this, you're going to get pi over 3 from here. That will be the principal value of the uh, argument. Now, here's where the two schools of thought come in. Some people say, oh, you can't just write it as pi over 3 and you need to write it as 2 pi k need to be added. Some people say k must be 0. Let's go ahead with k and then we can always eliminate it. Now, from here we get the following. e to the power z times ln 2 plus dot blah 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 equals 2 e to the power i times blah blah. I say blah blah because I'm about to ln both sides so we don't need to write those things two times. Now inside the parentheses we're going to have ln 2 plus i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And then this is multiplied by z. And on the right hand side, this is our, our, after natural logging both sides, so it's going to be ln2 plus i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. By the way, this should be an n, I think, on the left hand side, right? No, the right hand side has an n. I don't know. Okay. The right hand side is an n. Yes, the second one should be an n. Uh, the first one should be k because we did that first. Okay, that's why. And then finally, we're going to divide both sides by this thing. And we're going to decide on the n k situation then, okay? Sorry, I keep writing k instead of n. I'm confusing myself here. And notice one thing about this problem, which is really, really cool, is the presence of ln2 in real parts. So it's almost as if like z equals 1 is a solution, but it's just missing the mark because if you think about it, uh, one cannot be a solution because they're not the same numbers. But they're so closely related because they are complex conjugates, the real parts are the same. Make sense? For the solution, of course. So he here is what some people say. Some people say that, okay, you can't have a K. You don't need it. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Uh, so comment down below. But if you take K equals 0 and N equals 0, you're going to get a simpler solution like ln 2 plus i times pi over 3. And by the way, this should be a negative pi over 3, I think, right? Somewhere we should have a negative sign. I just made disappear. Okay, I made a... Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, sorry. Confusing myself again. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's with the ln um, 1 minus 3i. Okay, should be on the right-hand side. I should probably be, keep this a uh, little bit... Um, more organized. Um, this is going to be, let's see. Yeah, this, this should be a minus sign. Okay, I see. Because that is the 1 minus root 3. Okay, there should be a minus sign here. And oops, let me put that in there. This is a minus sign. Therefore, this will be a minus sign with the n. Okay, here we go. And that will bring us a minus sign here and then divide it by the plus version. Here we go. They're pretty close, but interesting part is that a power or exponent that conjugates is a complex number, which is a ratio of conjugates. Do you get the idea? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By the way, I think I have a solution from Wolfram Alpha. Uh-oh. This is what it looks like and hopefully you can make sense of it and you can check this with Wolfram Alpha as well. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye-bye.